Hey, good morning guys. So it's been a uh, crazy morning. We've literally cleared down because the plasterers have turned up today up in the loft, so we've cleared all the relevant tools down. And what we're gonna actually be doing now today is working on the sockets and glaciers. Yesterday we did all of the timber work to obviously support all of that and got that all fixed in the level door lock. And I'm really, really pleased with where we've got to now. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be mitering all of the sockets underneath, mitering all the fascias. We're then gonna be mechanical fixing from underneath the screws and then countersinking the MDF. The MDF we use is that tri-quartz though. It's a really great product, it's completely waterproof. If you've never used this material, yeah, it is a bit pricey, but it's definitely worth all the money. So Pete's down here cutting, I'm gonna be upstairs fixing, uh, and then all I need now is the relevant screws, which Pete's gonna kindly got. Yep. Put them in that pocket. with this. That looks pretty good doesn't it there. It needs to come this way a little bit so that top see flips into there like that. So what we're gonna do is that's perfect there but you can see she's just off the mitre here so I'm gonna tap Now you can see just on the mitre there, it might not be in the right place, but hopefully it's going to So what I'm going to do now is I'll get a load of glue, I'm going to get some screws in here first Then I'm going to get the other one over on the other side and match that up to make sure it's perfect When it is, I can then glue and screw all those all through one gap That's lovely, so I'm actually going to go a full sheet Because I'm just going to put another noggin down here And then that'll be absolutely beautiful then to go definitely see that I need to tap it this way so that's the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to tap this to this corner yeah, you got you got you got a tight tension at the back mate yeah no it's just I'm going to then drill it along really really pleased with that now just showed that little bit of um titivation with the hand plane that's it makes life easy so the one fixing at the front and the reason being is I'm actually going to put a secret fixing at the back because then I've not got too much then filling to do underneath so I'll only actually fit it in one position here, okay? Uh, the other position will be through the back and then through the back of the MDF then into the fascia and that will then be with a smaller uh, screw uh, it'll be something like a, a 90 or 100 mil uh, gauge 8 because um, I think gauge 10 might be... might, might go away with gauge 10 I'm just, I'll have a look, I'll see what, what works out best, okay? But it's always key to pilot it, I won't just drive it in, okay? So what I'm doing here guys, I'm just easing the back of this off, only slightly, not loads, just a knife. What that'll do, I'll just make sure that it comes up nice and crisp then. You can see a lot of left this edge on, just pulled it to this edge quite nicely. There we go. Okay. I think 
think that's that. Oh, look, Peter's done a lovely job of that cut. Obviously, we won't actually come to there, but what I can do is I'm just gonna tack that on for a second. Sixteen hundred, and the other one's going to be eighteen thirty. Sixteen hundred eighty-three. Here we go. Two or thirteens. Two, thirty. I hold the back of the blade, and I always, always do that. I never then continue around. And then the same again. Hold it firm. Back of the blade again. There you go. Boom. That's the other reason I put a slight angle on it because if I've got to do any plane work now, with that slight angle on it, it's going to make my plane work a lot easier. So look, I'm just going to blow that in here. It makes it a lot easier to put in. There you go, hopefully now. Okay, get a tap, Pete. That's lovely, that's in now. We get there, Pete. Oh, it's been emotional, hasn't it? It's been an emotional journey. What have we got there? That's okay. going to be absolutely amazing, mate. <laughs> Okay, buddy. It's looking good, isn't it? Woohoo! Woohoo! The old boy still got it. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! It's a good one. Is it good? Oh my God! That's lovely, mate. That's lovely, that is. That's. <laughs> so don't panic. Just quick, everyone. Just quick, everybody. Oh no. Oh, uh, stupid drill. So what a great day today. It's been a big, big day today. Getting all these softness and fascias on today. Absolutely smashed it. I'm really, really pleased how well we've all done today. All we've got to do now is get these lovely dental molds on the underneath. We'll show you what we've done so far on the front just to show the client, but it looks really, really nice. I'm really pleased with it. So let's go and have a quick look. Really pleased with those dental molds. Look great. Really set the building off they do. smashing it I mean I mean that the workmanship the quality really really pleased with the plasters Lee Worley and Pete are doing an absolutely awesome job I mean look at that line through the ceiling look how look at that beautiful and straight look at that do you know it's like everything in life isn't it you get the right trace people on board and they absolutely worth every penny these guys are absolutely top of their game these three lads they've absolutely smashed it in this loft and it looks beautiful and we're doing a really, really great job on the roof. We're cracking out through that. Just got to do all the sprockets. We can then throw the additional tile. Will's coming Monday, so we can get it actually waterproof. Well, pretty much 95% waterproof. And then we can start doing all the plaster work and stud work inside, downstairs, getting it ready, push forward. I'm going to increase the labor as well because I want to keep that motivation going because it's really, really key. Going to crack on with that. So we're on Thursday. Hopefully tomorrow it's going to be an office day. I've got a meeting this afternoon. Once I've done that meeting, uh, I've got them going to another meeting, so a bit of a back-to-back -back meeting, and then it'll be time to go home about half past six. So, see you later, guys. Hope you're going to have a great day. Take care. What it is, guys, we're not actually down to fitting the windows. There's actually a window company who's made the windows. Actually, they install them. What we're doing is just dry fitting them, just trying to get the uh, the build process pushed forward, but also. And just to get a little bit wind and uh, waterproof as well so I'm really really pleased with them they look really really nice they are uh, fitted in beautifully haven't they obviously they've got to be all leveled up we're just now going to get the building water tight with a couple of tarps we've got the uh, dental detail really pleased with that now it looks beautiful like this what we've done there is we've used a dry quartz so MDF joinery grade softwood for the uh, fascias except for the main fascia is Sapili 27 mil we use a lot of Sapili because it's just a great timber and a finishing timber as well and then what we'll then do is fill all the relevant holes that are there and then uh, Tom the client can come around and decorate so 
Okay, so we're on the final stage of getting the roof finished. Uh, it's been a, we've had a great couple of days. Final stage is getting these sprockets machined up. We did have a load of sprockets machined up by uh, a local woodworking firm, but unfortunately, because we've now onto a 300 mil cavity wall, the original ones were set for a nine inch wall. So obviously, we've got to machine some fresh ones up. For the sake of speed and mass production, I've uh, I've made this jig. All it means is that I'm not having to uh, set up a, a circular saw and uh, mark every piece of timber. It's quite a simple thing to make. We just did this out a bit of scraps off it. So all you do, get your number two. I've got all these machined up, ready to go. It's just a case of putting it in the jig, sending it through, and uh, just getting it all cut to the appropriate angle. It's working really well, actually. And like I say, it's an absolutely fantastic time saver. Also, because uh, we've got quite a lot of machining tools on site, we don't have to rely on the joinery firms to make this stuff for us. So that's a real time saver. So hopefully by end of play today, we're going to have all the uh, roof wrapped up. this I'm actually gonna fix it from above so you can't see any fixing through there this can be really really nice so I'm gonna get two in there two in there be absolutely perfect what I might do is just move those two forward so I'm going to get to there probably be better show us off the top and high bits it's pretty good actually good a bit here the reason I'm doing this is just get nice and flat so there's no bits of glue that's nice and flat now. Looks really good, really pleased with that so I can now glue that. I've scored the underneath as well. Get some decent screws in. There we go. It's just um, giving it an extra additional fixing, isn't it? You know, it's sort of um, with this glue, I really love this glue. It's a cracking glue and it's just absolutely solid. Uh, it's just that the clients bought a load of this. I give them about three or four different types of glue to buy, ready for the job. Because Tom runs his own company, he's buying power. He's actually better than us because he spends that much money in different building products. So we did a huge list of screws and everything else. And in fact, he was able to go direct to a lot of companies, uh, which I can't do, obviously. Uh, what I might do is actually get a bit of a helping hand and give a pilot. Oh, there you go. Fifty one marked, there we go. So all I'm gonna do now is get me it's gonna go. Just literally quick mark, quick mark, just to make sure I don't have your pilots where I want them. One there, one there, one there. That's it on that. I'm just gonna cover it up a bit. this up that's it lovely now, you just get the snots away so when I screw it up it's nice and firm This is my playground, I love it. Now, why wouldn't people want to get into construction? Can't understand. Kids of today, why they don't want to get into construction? It's really well paid. You get a whole diversity of work to do. Always working in different areas, different places. I like to have like, sort it out like it's in a production line. So like, you've 
just noticed probably I've cleaned all the blocks down, I've marked all the dental bits up, I've now counts them come all, I'm now putting all the screws in getting ready so I can just literally go along. Do, 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 you know? Like do, 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 do. The gauge stick, which I've set up now. First one goes in, up nice and tight. Make sure it's the right way around. Did an absolutely awesome guys with the guys at Lighthouse. We've just now got the outer shell of the frame, or actually the frame itself. And now they're just going to spin it and then get it into the opening. And then obviously we can start getting it all glazed up and all fitted, which would be great getting watertight. area. Definitely, well, anywhere in the UK, actually. Check out these guys. They do an amazing system. The doors that are going on are over here. They've got a huge, huge system going in. The client side is going to be absolutely beautiful. So I'm really, really super excited about getting these doors in and seeing the height of them. And once we get it closed in as well, as you know, we'll then become watertight, which means we can then start stripping out the rest of the stuff and then start getting all the uh, first fix done, ready there for the blaster itself. going really really well we've got moisture board on the ceiling here because we've got bathroom in here bathroom in here uh, stood work comes on this line here we've then got a walk-in wardrobe area on this situation here we've got the windows in we cover the windows up because we want to make sure the guys when they come to fit them we've got no mess all over them and obviously don't damage them as well we're going to change the floor we're here going to clean everything up on the edges here mark's working on getting stood work done in through here I'm going to be working on the staircase today. The guys are going to be working on doing the plasterboarding inside there because what they're going to do is they'll plasterboard the inside of that section there and then they'll literally skim the upstairs room uh, as well as this downstairs room and then we can then get the staircase in here. We can then um, board on the underneath the staircase here get this all boarded out and then get this gauze around to get it to flow. It's be really nice. We left a gap here because of the paneling and everything else that's got to go on because we're going to reproduce this paneling here all the way along here. It's then going to go round the staircase. It's then going to go up the wall underneath the window line there. In fact, it will go slightly up the wall here and then it's going to go all the way up the wall up there as well. So we're going to do all of that and the panel is going to look beautiful. Really pleased with the staircase, a company called Lindale, so gonna give them a shout out. Really, really good. Uh, definitely check out Lindale's link down below. Got some lovely spindles that are gonna go in to match the existings. Got all the noise going on. So let's go and have a quick look downstairs. Uh, hope all you guys are having a really, really good day. Uh, we're having a good day. It's Wednesday. We're about halfway through the week, got a lot still to do. So let's go and have a look. We got Phil here today, Bri here. We've got Alex who's clasping away on there. Now, I've got to mention, Phil was one of the main guys who did the paneling video, even though Ollie took all the glory. Yeah. <laughs> Building and control are really happy. They've been around the whole build so far. They've passed everything off, which is really great news. What we have done is put some screening up here. Uh, you can see 
is just to protect the glass here, this level here, to make sure we've got no spill onto the actual frames. We've got the underfloor heating down, it's 150 mil centers. Any of the areas that you can see marked out with the gray tape, it signifies there's units here. Obviously, we've got an island unit. We've got all the relevant fees, the electrics and the pipes that we need. There, the pool cores through here. We've got our beautiful storage area here. Uh, obviously, underfloor heating comes through. The manifold actually goes through into the garage out of the way because that's where the boiler and where the cylinder going to come and obviously all the pipes on the outside are all going to be lagged. And you can see there's a great big void all the way along here all day long because there's a whole massive row of units actually guys look there we go that's the kitchen layout there so it's pretty cool isn't it gonna be absolutely stunning and then i'm really looking forward to getting this great big lantern in up here this two meter by two meter by two meter piece of glass uh lantern going in here and then we have some lovely fancy paneling around the outside here and then obviously what we've got to do with the ceilings here we've got to insulate obviously get all the first fixture and insulate with a load of rock wall and then get the whole ceiling fireboarded the other thing is that we've got obviously two bathrooms upstairs we've got this lovely service void coming all the way down here connecting onto this pipe so mark's doing an awesome job with ollie up there and what we're doing is getting that pipe we're ready because of the two toilets hey mark here you go mate <laughs> he's all there he's doing an awesome job so he's uh, working on that and then we've got this beautiful void down here to bring all the pipes into and then obviously the uh soil work was done right at the very start of the project so yeah so there we go guys it's uh, gone really really well this week we've uh, moved mountains this week you know it's like sometimes you have weeks you think ah oh, wish i was a little bit further forward but no we've actually moved mountains really really pleased with where we're at Hey, good morning guys. So, RS Concrete came on Friday with the pump and um, Smith's Concrete supplied the material. Now that's down, you can see the shine on the floor. That's the latent. It's got to be all scarified before we go any further with it. I was taking out all the relevant board in here, all the stuff here. It's going to be cutting the plastic along the top line all the way along here. And then we're going to be taking out this frame. We're going to be taking out this frame here as well. Obviously we're in our first week of Christmas, so the key thing is that clearing back now, getting everything ready for Christmas, getting the site absolutely spotless, and then uh, thinking about what we're gonna be doing in January, start to put a, a, another list together, uh, even though we have the schedule over here. You can see the schedule here, guys, and obviously that's the original drawing, but it's really key that we start working towards putting more lists together. Uh, we're going to start on the very top and work our way through all the wearable work that's going to be done. I've got Phil here for uh, a couple of days, but he's going to go on to another job uh, with Brian. So the key thing is uh, getting everything together and just cracking on. But we'll get there. Just work a few more hours, just keep cracking it out. Van Gogh. Thank you, Van Gogh. Eat your heart out. But I only do things in blue. <laughs> That's it. You can have anything you like as long as it's good. Do you know when they say it feels like a pub job when you're trying to rush the pub job right to the very end <laughs> up to Christmas? This is how it feels, it's isn't a, it? Definitely a pub we, job. We have definitely got so many guys here. It's just absolutely organised. Kettleman, no, no, it's very <laughs> organised, but there's so many people here, and it's just like everywhere. And the one thing is. We need lights, we need lights, so that's why we're going to have loads of Tony lights produced. Because then we're never messing around with battery lights, drive me nuts. We are going to be bringing to you Tony lights. And what we're going to do is we're going to produce these and we're going to have a galvanised yellow base. This is going to be a uh, aluminium extrusion or a plastic extrusion. You'll have then USB ports. You're going to be able to daisy chain these lights together, uh, which makes it easier. But for me, I mean, I have tried absolutely loads and loads of different lights. The one thing as I've got older, I've really struggled with my eyes and 
I had to find a solution to this and obviously uh, plug-in ones that you charge are really, really good. But the problem I find is that you're continually having to think about charging them and where this light here literally illuminates the whole room. Everybody who's come across this since I've been uh, doing this as a prototype, they said how good it is for illuminating everything. Now, the one thing we are going to do is when we start mass producing these, uh, we're actually going to sell them at pure cost. We're not going to make any profit on it because, you know, I'm a massive advocate for always helping the industry, helping the fellow tradesperson. It's really, really key uh, for me is that all we do is keep putting back into the industry and championing everybody and sort of moving forward and they'll be sold at cost. That's what we're going to do. Um, so uh, follow us on that journey as we start to produce these and then obviously any input that anybody can give us would be uh, welcomed as well guys. So. Yeah, 
Nobody likes the soil pipe, do they? <laughs> ah, I was doing all the joints and I was going, oh, oh, oh. It's terrible, it's terrible. So bad, so bad. I said to Mark, I said, what do you put some plastic on the pipe? He's like, it's good for you, kid. There's an advert here, isn't there? Come on. Just give us a bit of a lead in there, child, if we need it, you know what I mean? Me and you set up this morning, didn't we, Al? I'm sure we did. Ollie, you've lost it. Just trying to get a little space. A little space. He's not. Give it a space. Sad boy, it's lovely, that does, Al, doesn't it? Yeah. So we can put the bead on there, it'll skim then too. That is the panel. I can try to go on there nicely. That's going to tack on there. Yeah, the door's opening in, so if the door's opening in, that means the slamming strip's going to be on this side. So the slamming strip, so if I make sure this architrave is just slightly nipping over, because it'll be a 12 mil arc, won't it? So if I just mark that, there we go. That's good and level there. Look at that for an eye. That weren't bad, Al, was it? I'll get a couple of tacks in here. Uh, remember what I do, guys, spin the nail around. There we go, look at that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a 60mm piece of timber in here, and when I cut that 60mm piece of timber, that's like me upright. I do a measure, when Al's plumbed that up there, from there to there, I'll measure one of the panels downstairs and see how close I can get to it, so even it out and then mark everything up, because I want the join of the MDF to be hidden behind one of the uprights, so it makes it nice and neat. So that's the line, isn't it, mate? Yeah? yeah. And on the staircase down there, it shows that the timber comes like an, on that line, doesn't it, buddy? Basically here, doesn't it? Yeah. So I think what we should do is keep it on the same. So if we go 30 mil here, we can check that, can't we? That's on the mini. Take a measure from the back of the architrave. So we've got 2580, mate. Okay. Yeah. So what we're going to do is try with that 2580, because obviously the uprights are coming down, aren't they? Yeah. Because that's what... Yes, that's it, yeah. So what we're going to do is the measurement downstairs is... Let me go and have a look. 410. So what we're going to do, guys, I'm going to try and match this panel in here as the closest I can, because obviously we've got 60 mil, including the moulds, and then each one of these panels between that position and that position is 410 mil. So let's try and get as close to that as we can. Sometimes I have to draw it out for me to understand it, so you can see, if you imagine, this distance here is exactly where I've got to now mark it out on the plaster wall, plumb it down, and that's exactly where all of these uprights are going to come. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> There's a stud there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, if it is, it doesn't matter. It's too late now, mate. It's definitely too late. There we go. Now, all these fixings that you can see, guys, you're not going to see any of them, are you? Because they'll all be gone. They'll all be covered. So, this is a great example. I said to Ollie earlier, join A Suite. Now, this was quite full, this tin. <laughs> oh my god! That's brutal! Who else has been eating in? <laughs> oh my god! Just put it down here. You put it, oh, I don't know. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. I really don't need to hide these, don't you guys? <laughs> hey you beautiful people, another beautiful day. So if you enjoy the video, make sure you like, comment and subscribe and hit that notification bell so every time we upload the video, you'll be notified. So have an awesome week. See you soon guys on the next vlog.